In just one hour, the public will hear the first findings from the committee tasked with investigating the insurrection at our nation's capital. More than a thousand people have been interviewed and a few of those witnesses will return for tonight's public hearing. The House Select Committee says it will reveal never before seen footage of the riot and highlight the planning that led up to January 6th. Tonight we are going in depth on the hearings. We begin with ABC's Ike Ajachi on Capitol Hill with the latest. Ike. That's right. In about just an hour, the committee says it will show Americans substantial new evidence just to make clear how close our democracy was to collapsing. Tonight, after almost a year's worth of compiling evidence from over 1,000 closed-door interviews and 100,000 documents, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol is now ready to show its work. The committee says it has hours of never-before-seen footage of that deadly day, including live witnesses and videotaped testimony from Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka, and her husband, Jared Kushner, who both had senior roles in his administration. Also being shown, new footage from documentary filmmaker Nick Quested, who was embedded with the Proud Boys before and during the violent insurrection. The committee's goal, to document the horror of that day and highlight what they claim is former President Trump's failure to do anything to stop it. Instead, Instead, the group alleges for months Trump laid the groundwork for the attack by repeatedly spreading baseless lies that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from him. I believe that tonight will be sort of an opening of the narration, the narrative of what happened as an assault on our democracy. Some Democrats feel the hearings will energize their voters, reminding them what's at stake ahead of the November midterm elections. Republicans like House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy dismissing the select committee's work, accusing the panel of targeting Trump and other Republicans at a time when they should be focused on economic issues. I don't see any prime time hearings set for gas price, for battling inflation. It's important to note this is not a legal proceeding. But ABC's chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, says the hearing could still have legal ramifications. Any information that they gather that shows potential criminality mm -hmm. could certainly be used in any future proceedings. Now, this is just the first of seven hearings, and the committee says they expect to finish presenting their evidence by the end of the month. And I, I know it was a busy day on Capitol Hill today. Democrats and Republicans holding press conferences ahead of the hearing. Were there any significant moments out of those? There were. were uh, Nancy Pelosi, you saw, you saw Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, really uh, pr uh, test test uh, the waters out there and tell people that they are just moments away of seeing substantial evidence that will really uh, give the American people an idea of what happened that day. But on the flip side, we saw House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy come out and actually have another contentious back and forth with our Jonathan Carl. Carl asked him flat out if he believed Joe Biden is the legitimate winner of the 2020 election. Minority Leader McCarthy failing to answer that question yet again, playing into former Donald, uh, President Donald Trump's basis claims that the 2020 election was stolen from him. Hmm. Back to you. Ike Jachi reporting for us tonight from our nation's capital. Thank you so much, Ike. More than 800 people now have been charged in connection with the January 6th attack. And today, FBI agents raided the home of Michigan gubernatorial candidate Ryan Kelly. And he was taken into custody on misdemeanor charges and has since been released on bond. Also, a dozen Coloradans facing charges connected to the insurrection. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez is live with where these cases stand now. Megan? Yeah, the Coloradans who flew to D.C. to participate in the protest and subsequent insurrection came from all over the state, really. About a dozen were arrested and charged. Most recently, Jennifer Horvath was arrested in May and charged with disorderly conduct, among other things. Her boyfriend, Glenn Wesley Croy, pleaded guilty in August to charges as well. Now, Avery Carter McCracken uh, is accused of punching two D.C. police officers at the Capitol. He faces numerous felonies, including assault of a police officer. Thomas Hamner is pleading guilty to charges like resisting arrest and civil disorder and should be sentenced in September. 
Hunter Palm is accused of entering Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office and then urging others to hack into a locked laptop. Pictures show him right here sitting with his feet on a conference table in the Speaker's office. It was a family member who identified him to authorities. Now, Robert Gieswine is also facing charges for intimidating police with a baseball bat and then spraying aerosols at him. Uh, they've, he's been ordered to remain in jail until his trial. And one of the well-known names of this group is former Olympic swimmer Cleet Kellner. He pleaded guilty back in September to obstruction of Congress and has agreed to fully cooperate with the investigation. Now, the FBI has posted the photos of 532 people on its website that were allegedly involved in that insurrection. Many have been arrested. Many others still have not been identified. The FBI is still asking the public to send them tips if you recognize someone in those photos. I'm live, Megan Lopez, number seven. Still so troubling all these months later. Megan, thank you very much. Nearly all the major television networks, including ABC, will carry the hearings in full tonight, except for Fox News. Fox News says it will cover tonight's House Select Committee hearing as, quote, news warrants, and is keeping to its prime time schedule. A Fox will allow its affiliates to take the hearings in full, and they will also be broadcast live on Fox Business News. And there are two more hearings set for next week on Monday and Wednesday at 8 a.m. our time. The January 6th committee hasn't announced a formal schedule for the rest of the hearings, but there could be as many as eight more throughout the end of the month. The final hearing will be sometime in September, right before the November midterm elections. We will have full in-depth coverage of tonight's primetime hearing right here on Denver 7 News tonight at 10. And you can also get the very latest on the DenverChannel.com and the free Denver 7 Plus streaming app.